So this is the this is the kind of writing when you're going through. And also, I wrote all this stuff, and then I went back and even added this little bit of a formatting. I just write. When I write, I write. And then I go back and consider even this level of formatting. I go back and do that as an after um, a afterthought. And when you write, you're typically speaking. When I write, I, I write as I speak. I speak internally, I, and I basically have a conversation like I was talking with Lacey. But I speak into a recorder. No, this book, I type so fast. Because I, well, so fast. I type maybe, I don't know, 30 to 50 words a minute. Yeah. Depending on how much chocolate bliss I've had that day. Yeah. <laughs> and what I put in it. Like if I, like when I, like if I know I'm going to, if I know I'm going to type at a, um, you know, like sit down and type at 10,000 words, that's going to be a full, you know, writing session of probably the better part of the morning. That's a lot of words to write. Then I will tune the frequency of my brain and my physical body with uh, rainforest herbs. And like I'll use uh, uh, guarana to keep my uh, physical body. It, it, guarana changes the frequency of physical tissue. It just changes. And also glandular function. And I'll use ma huang. I'll use a little bit of ma huang for, to uh, um, uh, refine or um, up-level my ability to process oxygen. Mm -hmm. Because more oxygen to your brain, you can just keep your focus. Everything runs faster. It, everything is just at a... It's like the difference between it being in low gear and you know shifting up a gear or two. Mm -hmm. So that's when I write. I when I know I'm going to write for a long period of time, then I like when I wrote the first ten thousand words of this book. I wrote it uh, in maybe two or three sessions, <coughs> maybe five or six hours. And each one of those two hour sessions, I knew okay. So I you know I had a slight bulleted item of the you know just like like a, a little uh, half a eight by ten page like this of just a few bullet items and like okay here's the things i'd like to cover and so i went in and made all the inventions those are the main titles the topics chapters and then i went in and said well what does this chapter make me think about and i put those as subheads, subheads, subheads and then i just went and wrote 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 wrote, wrote, wrote. I like filling in an outline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah. yeah that's I know. I I bought a long time ago. I bought that Dragon software. Yeah. And uh, I've been doing a lot more writing lately, and so I kind of pulled that off the shelf and reloaded it on my machine. And after about a day of that, I just like went back to typing. Oh yeah, you'll pull your teeth out with that. I I, I mean, it was fine. It was actually giving me pretty good results from a standpoint of you know accuracy, but I just didn't find that I was as creative as when I was typing. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, somebody's at the door here, so I'm going to pause this for a minute. Hi. So this is uh, Claudia that's just Claudia joined us. And, uh, Hi, Claudia. Unfortunately, at 11 o'clock, I saw the, <laughs> the message. Today. Oh, okay. So we were talking about meetup a minute ago. So that means the meetup message went out about this meetup. Um, nice. The meetup group formed while we were running the meetup. Yeah, so here's just a, 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 another aside about meetup: is never be attached to your group actually getting through the meetup trolls. Troll is a term I use for a minimum wage employee, a meetup employee idiot. Uh, I thought that's a judgment. Um, somebody that doesn't really understand about how to use meetup, they just happen to work there. And I would say the troll applies to much more broader companies and oh, yeah, leaders than just meetup. Yeah, so, so the meetup, so when you, when you first form a meetup group, uh, your meetup group goes to a troll for review. And the troll makes a determination from meetups like 30 or 40 page toss to turn to service if your group meets their criteria to be allowed into the auspices of meetup.com. <laughs> and so I, form, I set this up like three weeks ago or something. And they, uh, two weeks later, they den denied my group. So, mm. so then I went and changed like a couple of words here and there and I just sent it back, did the whole thing over again. So rule of thumb, when you're doing all your meetup group work, make sure you put that in text files, like all the text for your first event, all your text for your meetup yes. description, everything. So you don't, when they deny your group, all that disappears. Mm. Right? You don't get it back. You don't get like a message like, we reviewed this group description, here it is, and it doesn't mean it. Oh, no, no, they just say, no. <laughs> no. You know most people aren't doing that, they can't just send in the same thing. Again. Yeah, so they just say, no. <laughs> And so I just went back and cut and pasted the whole thing in and, you know, the first meetup group took me maybe 30 or 40 minutes to decide what I'd like to write. The second one, it took me like five minutes. And actually what I did on the second one, okay, so here's another thing about meetup too. This is probably a good thing to know. When you're forming your meetup groups, uh, always add a first event 
<coughs> because that, that seems to make a big difference. Problem is, it used to be that the people working at Meetup were very, very smart. Very be. smart. Because when Meetup first bootstrapped, everybody there was a Meetup organizer. I mean, that's why they built the thing, was they were all organizing all these meetups all over the place, and they required a platform to organize people. So everybody there was running meetups. Now, they ain't that like that anymore. Uh, you know, they got minimum wage employees doing it. So it used to be that the more detail you put about in about your meetup description and group uh, event, the first uh, few events, the better. Because they were, you were actually being reviewed by a meetup organizer. So they could tell, this guy is just lying. Or this guy looks like he's really doing what he, mean, what he says he's going to do. Now what I did is for the second pass, they denied my group, and then I sent in a, on Sunday night, I formed the group again. And this time I just called it the, you know, the book design mastermind and said in the group description, title says it all. <laughs> no, th nothing to confuse the troll, right? So the troll looked at that and said, oh, okay, book design mastermind. That sounds like you might have to get together. And the guy's got a physical event. And in the physical event, I said, book design mastermind, our first meetup mm. with a physical address. And so the troll then, they got that, said, oh, I understand that. But I apologize. I'm really judging. So the less is more theory? Yes, the less is more now because you're being reviewed by a troll that's no longer a meetup organizer. Why did you get kicked out the first time? Why do you think they denied you the first time? They won't tell you. They, they just, oh no, you get a message. It's I'm like gonna, the Google black hole. I wonder if I've got, I, I, I think I've already deleted. I should save one of those. You get a message saying, your meetup didn't meet our terms of service. It appears you're selling some product for profit or something like I mean, there's a couple of little general things. Does it have to do with having to go review the book first? Uh, maybe, but it doesn't matter because I put too much information. It, I confused the troll. The troll went, blah, 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 and he said, I, I don't know. I'm too scared. Says, well, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm a scared troll. I must deny, deny. It's like when the Daleks in when the, no. Doctor Who. Yeah. So, uh, what did the Daleks say in Doctor Who? Uh, did, um, who's a Doctor Who fan? Nobody? What did the Daleks say? Uh, did, Disintegrate. Disintegrate. Um, I can't remember. Anyway, it's <laughs> obliterate or something. Anyway, that was the. I confused the troll. I gave him too much information. So I went back, and then once the group, once I got a message on Monday morning this time, because it was so simple, I got a message saying we've approved your group. And then I thought, well, huh? They hadn't sent out the email yet. I wonder if they'll d turn off my group if I go back and change it all. So I just went back and copied the exact out, uh, cut and paste. Pack the original description, back the original information about the first event, and republished it. And that's what went out today. Mm -hmm. So that the way you do it now is you put something simple that the trolls can understand. And after they approve your group, you have to watch your email all the time until it comes in. And once they um, approve it, then... Just go in and change it back to what you really wanted to do. Yep. First and you go back so there's a little bit of a delay then for that invite email going out between approval and invite email. Yeah, oh yeah, it can be three, four, five days. Yeah, I just realized I still had this thing running here. <laughs> um, here's another important, just little um, trick to do. Here is you'll notice when I save any kind of uh, file or um, video or audio, I always embed the date and the title because I guarantee I have stuff that goes back to the early '90s. And I ain't got a clue when I recorded it or what the context was. That's me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's five three, not four three. Oh, it is. Where are you up to May? Never know it by the weather. Although maybe today. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so we kind of got down a, a rabbit hole there on Meetup again. But uh, anyway, that was the that's the text that I use to generate my books. It's really easy to write and allows you to write stream of consciousness. I also, um, uh, since it's just basically text, when you like when you take your book and just read the written um, page, are the pages written where somebody else can read them too? Sure. Oh, well, just hire some kid in the neighborhood to read them or something. Mm -hmm. Find some, you know. Um, probably a girl um, that has better, you know, no, no offense guys, I am a guy. But, 
well. Girls have a different sort of um, neocortex, especially in their early years, and just hire some, you know, look for the babysitter posters on your mailboxes and call one of those and say, hey, how'd you like to, what's your babysitting fee? How'd you like that for reading for an hour? And they'll go, well, yeah. yeah. I don't have to deal no with diapers. children, no diapers, no trying to get them to bed or washed, you betcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, just have them have some somebody with a very clear um, speaking voice that actually ends their yet. consonants. So um, for proofreading? No, to, she's got all her pages are handwritten cursive book, and so she needs to, to get them into audio format so she I can send them over to Fiverr. That's not a big deal. Yeah. Do you have one of your other meetups right now? So you've got Inside Track and Book Design. <coughs> Uh, the only three that I'm running right now are uh, Inside Track Party, which is the primary group that I run, and uh, the Book Design Mastermind, which um, I'll I'll probably run that for a little while, uh, and then I'll just close it down and roll all those people into Inside Track Party, uh, because your that email only goes out to you know 50,000 people when you form the group. Right. So I'm I just I just made a commitment that I'm going to form a group like every month or two, because if I do one every month, that's 600,000 people. In so one I, year for that for zero. You transfer the emails to your main inside track. You can't transfer the email, but you can tell people if you'd like the residual content from all our events, yeah. go join here. This is where I announce mm -hmm. it. And if they do, great. And if they don't, you don't want them anyway. They are exactly. licky loose. The licky loose should disappear. So it's a way to call your list mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Too much. Too soon. <laughs> too bad. Oh wait. <laughs> nope. So yeah, that's a good way to to continually form new groups and get that initial email sent out to people. Yeah. Also a great way to test titles for books. I was just realizing this the other day. Holy moly. Test a title for a book. You betcha. And you have a third one? Is that the... Oh, Sacred Word Circle. I just I run that under my account for uh, Yamaya. I might set up an account for her and just move it to her account because you, can, you only have three slots as a meetup organizer. Yeah. And it's really annoying because... Was it there, I thought there was an upgrade option where you could get six if you paid more. Mm. Oh, is there? I thought Did so. they put that in? Oh, shoot, I'll, I'd do that in a heartbeat. I'll have to go back and look at that. You're like, instead of just forming two groups, I could form six and close them in three months. Well, yeah. the, the challenge is that if you've got like 18 different, <laughs> ad, 18 different accounts you have to log into, it's really, it gets really complicated keeping up with that. Yeah. So the other thing to keep in mind too when you're forming meetup groups is never use like if you are forming a meetup group for your book um, uh, Metaphysical Erotica, don't use that term unless you tack something else on the end of it. What do you mean? Because so like like if I'd used Book Design Mastermind and they denied my group, that link meetup.com/slash/bookdesignmastermind would be gone because they won't let you have the link back. If they deny your group, that link's just gone. So what you do is you, when you register your group, you tack on the end of it dash one or dash foo or and then dash edit it after it's approved. yeah after it's approved and if they deny it you basically always register or set up new meetup groups with a throwaway name in case it gets yeah, thrown away okay. and then after it forms because if you register a meetup group under your business name or your real name something that you're like planning on using for the next twenty years and meetup says no nah, they ain't no recourse. It's like Facebook. I, who's tried to have some interaction with Facebook? Or Google. Oh. Yeah. Facebook deleted one of my accounts once with like 4,000 people and they said, <clears throat> oh, I, they said, you violated our terms of service. Please refer to the terms of service and don't do it again. And do? the link went to a 40 page, oh, you don't, they don't tell you because then you might figure out how to scan the system. No, you just have to do, not do it again, whatever what, it was. Whatever it was. That's oh no, great. that's not our problem. No, just oh, don't do it again. Oh. <laughs> That's the, that's the Facebook way. Pardon me? Sounds like dealing with the church. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so anyway, it's a, it was an interesting um, situation. So make sure when you register your meetup names that you pick a throwaway name. All right, well, let's see. We're almost wrapped up, though. So I'm going to run through some of these uh, uh, questions uh, that we had. Uh, Claudia, do you, what uh, what niche are you, uh, do, are you, do you have books published? Are you planning on well, publishing the book? Or? Well, uh, first of all, sorry for my English because I'm a French for, uh, speaker, okay? I'm, I'm here from six, five months. Uh, I'm coming from Quebec City and uh, there are Frenchies. Well, um, I started like co-author in three books until present. I'm, 
I was uh, worked with uh, professional women at work, and uh, in fact, I'm uh, in the present life. I'm a manager and a teacher in management, and uh, my uh, second life in the 4D, I'm a spiritual t uh, teacher and healer. And uh, starting uh, three months, I uh, start my book. Uh, uh, with uh, te technical spiritual for the manage uh, the day after divorce and uh, mm -hmm. how. Oh, I like that. The day after divorce. That's yes. Oh, that's, because, a, that's a good uh, title. Well, uh, I had many clients and myself first, <laughs> and um, this book is special because it's not right uh, wrote only by me, but also by my daughter. She will have. Uh, chapter, uh, the point of the view of the child who passed mm. the, the divorce, that uh, and how spiritually technical help her to manage this uh, period. Cool. And yeah, it's uh, my daughter. It's a very high level the spirit uh, person, and um, she. Well, <coughs> I have uh, three chapters presently, and uh, the start and uh, everything, and. Personally, I'm interested to find a publisher, an editor, to help me because 12 years ago I was a technical director to a publisher in Romania. My, my original is from Romania. But AF which, uh, which I'd recommend you write some about too because I think people be interested. Romania is a very interesting country. Yes, and very few people uh, in America know anything about Romania. Yes, uh, Gymnasts, that's uh, yes uh, gypsies. especially because in the last period uh, it's a very high level of spirituality mm -hmm. there. But wow. yeah, they, they try to find uh, that Romania is the center of the world. Well, <laughs> yeah, and a lot of spiritual texts, uh, Romania is like an epicenter of uh, oh, spiritual current. Yes. Romania and Brazil. Yeah, yes, because they, uh, there they are there they are four bigger uh, center of energy and uh, they thought that um, they are a kind of spiritual. Yes, yeah, so Romania even is sim very similar to Brazil. I was talking with my buddy from Brazil, or actually I've got a lot of friends in Brazil. Brazil is built on an entire strata of crystalline substance. Mm -hmm. The whole freak, the whole Brazil is basically yeah. sitting on a big crystal. And Romania it's, is very similar. Similar, yeah. <coughs> very and similar. They found that uh, the, in the mountains they are uh, solid uh, crystal, yeah. yeah. Crystals, a big wow. crystal and energy. And believe me, I. I'm a healer, I feel energy, I was there, it's true, but just there are a lot of things to, uh, to research there. I'm also a researcher in my professional life and uh, I know to manage <laughs> all these things. Uh, I'm not in extremely, I, I'm a person who, who has also the head on the shoulders, not only in the fourth dimension. <laughs> and um, well, this is, I'm trying now to find a publisher because I know how uh, a book has to be done because I did many books when I was manager in the, this publisher, but it was 12 years ago. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so what I'd recommend is, um, uh, is uh, explore Kindle publishing because I think it's up to like uh, for every page of physical books sold now today, um, there's something like 10 or 12 Kindle book pages sold. Okay. So, so basically right now the, the reason <coughs> publishing doesn't work anymore. The, okay. the whole physical book market, like if you want, if, like I watch my kid, or, well, Yumaya had four children that I inherited when I married her, and, and so Yumaya and I watch her youngest kid all the time. Thea has got this iPhone. She does everything on this. If I had to freaking look at an iPhone screen to do my typing and writing, I, w I would give up. She does Facebook, email, web searches, Pinterest. She watches movies. I'm like, Ain't no way I'm watching them. You got a good screen. Got, what's wrong with the big screen no, TV? I, do that. I watch them in bed. <laughs> on a, on a little I bitty phone, though. Depends on where I am. If sure. I have to, that's all Anyway, I've got. My, my point about all this is that, w that we are just moving into, and we've actually gone over the, the like, the, I think we probably, well, maybe yet to hit the, the apex 
of the point where people uh, no longer like physical books. You do, and I do, because of our chronological age. I mean, I love, like, Clint and, and I were, <laughs> yeah, Clint, Clint and I were talking about this the other day. I like picking up a physical book and being able to read this. I don't want to be re-radiated with some goofy screen or have my battery run out when I read my book. Enough all day doing no, work. I, when I want to, when I like to read a book, I like to read a book. I like to feel the pages because I have an, a relationship with books that I've had for, for you know, I don't know, <coughs> since reading kids' books 50 years ago. So I like reading physical books. But the people in the next generation, no. you, I know people today that are in their 20s and 30s, they don't even own a physical book. Uh, but, sorry <laughs> that I interrupted. Uh, I didn't think that to, to, to publish in a paper, okay? My problem is that uh, I have to structure a little bit my book because I'm writing now in French and mm -hmm. I w want to translate in English. Oh, well, I need so, somebody to help me. Yeah, I'll tell you how to do that. Don't get a publisher. For, for whatever, whatever you have learned about publishing, just put that in a box and say, this will make me go broke if I do it. Everything you know. <laughs> yes. Okay, and I here's what you do. I trust book. I trust. Yeah, so what you do instead of going to a publisher, because they don't know. Publishers, anybody that has published physical books in the past, they think in that way and they will, go, they will drive you broke. Because they're all going broke. I got. I got a, a suggestion. Is you look at the, the book publishing company's financials, they are hemorrhaging cash like big dogs. They're all going down. Hmm. Bookstop is closed. Barnes and Nobles is on its last leg. It's it's like gasping. They've been you know hitting it with the paddles now, and it's it'll be gone soon. Taylor's is gone. Um, Walden's is gone. What, what's the other big Borders. one? Borders, yeah. I mean, they're all, they're all gone. And the reason is, ain't nobody buying physical books no more. What you can do for your book, though, is just write in the language you're comfortable with and then go to Fiverr.com, which is Fiverr uh, with an extra R.com. And you can usually get, um, you know, translations done for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes of an audio uh, transcribed into text for $5. I guarantee if you go to a publisher, you ain't getting no 15 minutes transcribed for $5. Oh, no. You're, well, for 95% of your books and revenue, we can, we'll happily publish and translate into French. No. Go to Fiverr. Have somebody. And also, instead of writing, record it. Because it's very difficult to take a stack of written pages and give to somebody electronically. <coughs> if you record it, then you can just send them the recording. And that's, that's a much more effective way to have transcriptions done. Wow. So, does that help? But yeah, write it, in, first, write it in French so that you can... Yeah, don't try to translate it to English. Write it your heart on the English. Yeah, write, write it in French. Well, I think in three languages. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you... Sometimes I'm writing in three languages. Mm -hmm. Well, so <laughs> what you, what you can do... But it's in French because uh, from eight years I'm a teacher and... Uh, you know, the connection is very, very important for me. Well, and also what you can do, too, is when you, uh, when you write different books, you may find, for example, you might find writing about some topics because you know the, uh, your native language best because that's what you grew up with from birth. You might find that some of the nuances of how you speak about certain topics, especially spiritual topics, might be better to speak Romanian, maybe, or yeah, French, or yeah, so. You, in other words, you, you pick the language. French. But if you go to Fiverr, none of that matters. You no, find somebody and you say you go search for somebody that'll do a French to English translation. You and give them one chapter, yes. test them. Yeah. Yeah. Would, yeah. Wouldn't yeah. there be? A, don't you imagine there's a program somewhere? I mean, just like you can on the internet say it's which language you want. There's no, no way. No, you, you'll never, a computer will never beat a human, at least today. I've got to sneak out here. I'm going to go pick up my grandson. Thank you, David, so much. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, so Fiverr, but Fiverr, I mean, I, that's where I have all the, all the transcriptions for my audios done. And the girl I pay, I have two people I use. One that does it for uh, 20 minutes transcription for $5. Um, there you they for transcriptions that I require no fast turnaround because it'll take them a week or two sometimes because they have such a backlog and then I've got a girl in the Philippines which is cool I, I really like her mm -hmm. and she does 15 minutes for five dollars and she do, usually does a 24-hour turnaround mm -hmm. or sometimes 48 if she's really if I understand this site it's yours no oh. fiverr.com is there there's like 
something like five million jobs listed on there right now of people doing different things. Well, I'm sorry mm -hmm. that I asked because I didn't know it and I saw that your name is David Fiverr. Oh, David Fiverr. Oh. Hey, there you hey, go. I can. Oh. 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 Piggyback on their branding. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny to do a pen name and write something under David Fiverr. I wonder if I'd get any extra traction to it. You could do some like... You, know, you could, could do the Fiverr story. You could, spoof it. you could do the favor right <laughs> on the new crystal found favor anyway. right. Well, let, let me run through these uh, some of these questions right quick. You're very welcome. Um, let's see. So, Ann, we talked a little bit about your stuff. I, we've gotten all those items. Clint, um, I did talk about writing without writing, which is the transcribing, Claudia, that we were just talking about. Uh, oh, you were talking about doing contests, Clint. Yeah, um, book launch. Yeah, so one of the things I've been doing is I've been using the contest model, you probably noticed. Contest and I've. Um, pardon? Contest model? The contest model. The contest model is basically you're giving away something of high value for a micro action. Like if you go to a, like a, um, uh, one of these expo center fairs down at the convention center, you walk in and they'll be like, right. you know, you fill out the entry form to win a new car. Right. So it's a micro action. You're trading your basically all your information. Lord knows if those things ever, maybe they don't even have a car. Who knows? Uh, and if they do, it's probably some beater they bought from Ugly Duckling that somehow looks kind of like maybe it's the same colors. Anyway, mm -hmm. so you're taking a micro action. You're filling out all your personal information and giving it to this random stranger for the hope that you'll get this big ticket item, this thing of value. So what I've done is I've been start swapping reviews for my book for normally the $200 speed site analysis reviews that I do. So you can either pay me the normal 200 bucks or you can spend 10 bucks and buy my book and 10 minutes or 15 minutes to read a section. I'll tell you what I'd like review. You go read it, post the review, and then I'll do a, a review, a site review for you. So you can do that. You can use that contest model with like your business consulting. And also, I figure that, you know, every one of these speed site reviews I sell also, you know, some number of those turn into clients that hire me because they can't figure out what the heck to do. Oh, they can't understand yeah. what you're saying. No, if you go look at them, the, they're really straightforward now. Okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, that contest uh, model is really good. Um, let's see. Bobby, that book that you published, The Divine Power of Edge, um, mm -hmm. um, you said that it was out of print in Amazon right now? Yeah, I, I just looked the other day. It's not listed there anymore. Barnes & Noble still has it. Well, what, what you do, do you have physical copies of it? How many copies do you have? I probably have about 30. Um, all right. Well, I mean, one of the things you could do is just you go and list it. Is it your self-published? Yeah. Okay, so you own everything. You don't have to go to a publisher. Lord help you if you do to try to get the rights to do anything with your book. Yeah, no, they we created our the book. publisher will rather you and them both go broke before they let you do anything to to help sell your book. It's just ridiculous. Um, so if you do uh, happen to have a book that you use a publisher with, make sure that you retain 100% of the digital rights. That's one of the things I'm doing. I'm negotiating right now, or I'm about to negotiate with a person to do the physical publishing of my book except I'm going to retain all digital rights copies, uh, any, all rights to the digital sales. So I can do anything I like with the digital stuff. If they do anything, if they think they know how to sell it physically, that's fine, but I know how to sell it digitally that will run circles around them. And then uh, also, since you've got a physical book, you could take one of those books and um, just uh, find somebody that will uh, transcribe it. Oh, well. If you're, oh, do you have the original PDF? Oh, well, just take the PDF and, um, uh, you know, you probably just, you know, as a first pass, as edition one, just take the PDF and upload it to Amazon. And take a camera and snap a picture of the, the cover if you don't have the artwork and upload that as the cover. Yeah, we've got everything. So... So by the end of the day, I expect to be able to go on Amazon and find, well, maybe one will be able to review. But it won't be today. But by Monday, I could go and look for the Divine Power of Edge and find that book. Actually, you could go to eBay and find it. No, I, by Monday. <laughs> by Monday. It's I expect, I expect to go to Amazon and be able to see the, the camp. Because, all, I mean, it's it would probably take you maybe 15 minutes if you have the cover art and the the um, PDF just uploaded. Yeah, I have to track it down. It's in different places, but so it won't be by Monday. 
but but you'll let you'll let me know when it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's time for it. Again. Yeah, and that's another thing. Like I, I was hoping Lynn Sherrell would come today. All those, all those PDF books she's got. She, she could probably. She told me she's got three books on Amazon. Well, I mean, I know she's she got. She's probably close to a hundred to just do a PDF. She, she, she could be making so much more oh, money than she probably fine. makes. Well, I, I think what Lynn requires, Lynn, if you're listening, what you require is somebody to um, go through and basically be a. a, a, a a librarian for her yeah. and to go through and say okay get, tell me what you got where is it what is it I bet I bet Lynn's written so much stuff I bet she only remembers about half of it maybe She's maybe a quarter hundreds of products hundreds. yeah and so each one of those products could easily be uploaded as, as a book so yeah. anyway that was my, my that was my comment to you is Thank you. Get, get her done uh, let's see and I apologize I have to go I have to be somewhere oh, okay so. cool awesome uh, and then you. um, you're very welcome. Shane was talking about uh, curating. Um, does anybody have a bunch of content? Like Octavia, do you have a bunch of? You've written a bunch of content, right? Other content. I have, I have a lot of content that is um, the meditation CDs that uh, meditations that I've recorded. But I spit content out fairly quick. Cause yeah. So um, actually, yeah. So this would apply to people like uh, anybody that's got large volumes of content, like a lot of us here. I've, I've, got, I've, got, a, I've got on my list to have this conversation with Bob Stevens because he's got a lot of content. Mike Labadine's Austin All Natural. You know, each one of these magazines is a PDF file on his website. I'm like, dude, what is wrong with you? It's like, you know, if I was Mike Labadine, Michael, if you're listening, this is worth his weight in gold. Uh, today, go to your website, take all of Austin All Natural issues down, take them down, take the PDF files and upload each one of them and sell them for, yeah, I don't know. He could put them in the Kindle newsstand because it's a magazine. Is there a like, Kindle newsstand now? What, how, much, how much can you sell magazines for? I don't know. It's, uh, I think it's toward the low end of the books, but the PDFs of so the magazines minutes. wouldn't be long enough for a book. So he yeah. did a lot of those thoughts. Oh, that's right. So, so Clint, so, so he needs to combine them into six yeah. issues or a year's worth of issues to yeah. combine into one Kindle book. So this is why you have to really work with somebody like you got to keep up with people like Johnny and Hollis and people like Clint and me that are using Kindle publishing on a regular basis because I was unaware there was a Kindle, what's it called? Kindle newsstand. So it's yeah, like the it's Apple like newsstand. Apple newsstand. Yeah. Right, and so basically, what that means probably is that there's some like Amazon's throwing out. If you publish a book less than twenty five hundred words now, you can't even get it approved anymore. And if right. you had one up under twenty five hundred words, it's either gone now or will be soon. Well, the new, yeah, the newsstand is exactly like Apple newsstand, like Women's Health magazines that you get on the newsstand. It's yeah. the digital versions. Of the, so in the newsstand, that would be the perfect place to publish. Um, I think he usually has about 30 pages. Yeah, so this is like a 30-page magazine. So that's where you'd publish a magazine. Now, is it possible to be able to do a magazine and a book to be able to link to one another? Yep. So one of the things I've been thinking about is like, well, so, okay, well, what, what, what do I do to create a really set of, like, say I'd like to do a, a, a newspaper that's like interviewing people in Austin about like, uh, I don't know, Austin, Austin metaphysical, Austin business, Austin, I don't know cool kids that are doing wild things in the world. I, you know, there's any random number of magazines you could do, right? And, but each one of those is going to be small. And so the, the Kindle newsstand would be the perfect place for those to run. And once I get the, the once I can get, could get a process done for one of those magazines, then I just, you know, hire interns from UT, which work for nothing or near nothing, to go out and be my reporters, right? So that's how, Shane, you know, Shane, we were talking, uh, Shane and I were talking about how do you come to a point where you're publishing, you know, a book or something every day, well, you have to have teams of people to do that. And the best way to have teams is, you know, I, that would be, seems to me like a fantastic way to teach um, high school kids and even college kids, you know, for God's sake, you avoid student loans, do something useful. I know people that are got, you know, like two hundred thousand dollars worth of student loans that are never going to pay those things off. So you're starting to say if you've got a, a whole bunch of content. Yeah, if you've got a whole bunch of content, then you can uh, uh, just uh, 
write a, write a, like a map to your content, just map it out, how the contents is organized, just the, like the big silos of information it's organized in, kind of like what I was talking about, about uh, Austin Metaphysical, Austin Business, Austin Cool Kids Changing the World, you know, there's, and you know, you can just go peruse the top 100 sellers in Amazon and that, and that will tell you all you require to know about organizing content. Uh, and then you just map out what content goes in which, bu which bucket and start writing books that go with the buckets. Okay. And I think this will be way, way easier once I get my uh, publishing tool online so people can just throw text up and have a book spit back out at them. Nice. Yeah. That was the biggest challenge I had, and, and I'm a pretty smart guy. And I'm like, I'm looking at all I want is a book generation tool that will take raw text of some random format that's very simple, give me a HTML book that matches Kindle format with a clickable table of contents and a clickable index. That's all? I mean, it didn't seem like... It really doesn't seem like Did you like get the uh, start or the begin? You're going to make that's it. In, in, in edition 12, I think I've got all that fixed, but they have, you know, it's going to take them however long. It seems to work in the Kindle previewer. You're still at 1.11. Yeah. Updated. So uh, anyway, that's why it sent me down the rabbit hole of building a book generator. Is I, you know, I'm like, it don't seem like rocket science to me. Seems like something everybody could use. Seems like you're going to make a hell of a lot of money off this. Well, what it seems, like. seems like. <laughs> if you do a good job. Yeah, it was it was it was other than what I thought about. When I was thinking that I'd just write books, and then it, it occurs to me like covers, like there's no cover tool. Like it, it, the cover that I generated for Beautiful Business. It, I've got a little tool that generates that, and I don't know, it took me 15 minutes to write the little piece of software that generates that thing, and it's a pretty cover, right? And, you know, and it's simple, and also on low-resolution black-and-white devices, and it, it shows. Big, yeah, and the thumbnail size. Yeah, and if you notice, Clint actually um, had some, wasn't it you that had the Fiverr guy do a yeah. cover? So Clint, so this is the other thing, you work with people that publish books all the time, Clint is working with this guy on Fiverr that gives him a cover bag that's the wrong size. Clint could have said, oh, it's the wrong size, I'm going to push back and have the guy fix it, or I'm going to try to fix it, and Clint says, well, that sounds like some work. I think I'll just publish it and see what happens. So we put it up, and we're looking at this, and it's like, Clint, dude, how'd you get your book that big, your book cover? And he says, I don't know, I just published what the guy from Fabergate gave back to me, because I'm basically too lazy to fix it. And I'm like, well, I wonder how wide we can go. And so now every time I publish a new version, I'm making it, you know, I'm changing the aspect ratio. I'm trying to get the widest frame where it doesn't cut off, because that lets you write text on there that's the most readable. If you look at most books, they use the Amazon uh, guidelines for publishing, and they're really narrow, and you try to read them, it's like, what? What's that say? <laughs> so, yeah, so... Clint gave me the way to start gaming the system. All right, well, let me just, I'm just going to glance through. There's only a couple of things on here. Um, uh, oh, another uh, last quick thing to, another great place to practice material is uh, speakermatch.com. The guys that you had, uh, what's, what was the guy's name? Um, yeah. Anyway, speakermatch.com, they've been running for 12 years now, and they're, yeah. they've become the largest uh, uh, dating service for uh, people that mm -hmm. speak and people that like to have a speaker. So that's where you go to find your, your uh, speakers yeah. and speaker engagement. So that's yeah. a good place, and I think it's only like 50 bucks a month. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm about to sign up on there, too, to start generating some more traffic. So, All right, any other pressing questions before we wrap up today? No, sir. Well, you mentioned uh, you're doing some create space stuff now too for physical books. Okay, so Clint and I had this conversation. Everybody know Create Space is the physical publishing arm of Amazon. Right. So Clint's saying, I love your book, and boy, that's gonna be screwed up when you put it in Create Space, and I'm thinking, hmm, boy, he's right about that, because they're all clickable links, right? So basically what the difference between print, printing a physical book and create space is there are no hyperlinks, right? You can't click on the book That's and have it go someplace. Yeah. So in that case, what, I, what I'm going to do, I, I, I've worked it out in my brain today how I'm going to do it. I'm going to change my publishing tool where that I can flag different parts of text to go with different types of books. So if you publish a book and you flip on the digital version, you get this you know, hyperlink. And if you flip on the physical version, then you get the actual written out hyperlink. Naked link, yeah. Like instead of saying inside space track space party, 
that would be fine for the Kindle book, but then on the written book, it's going to have http colon slash slash inside track party dot com slash try. Right. So I'll have a like so I'll have to come up with some set of flags that um, you know basically you can inline just make up whatever you'd like. Could they like, be color coded? Color coded. Well, they'll have to be text. Yeah, so you'll call you probably don't like, want to do color and create space anyway because it supercharges your the price. You oh pay. yeah. So in, in yeah the other thing so in you create, want to stupid looking black and white. Yeah, the other thing in create space. Yeah, in fact, you know that's what I should do. Is I should uh, what I should do is just do it all with skins, uh, and some way to um, I'll I'll come up with some syntax and then where the the CSS turns on some things for some. It seems like for you it would just be an if else statement. If the person chooses digital. Use this link structure else. But it's not just links; yeah. it's a whole style sheet. The whole style sheet would probably have to be. Yeah, because also the style sheet in my case it yeah, would change to where, where like all the purple would change yeah. to black, and right. all the like back yellow stuff would just change to white, where there'd just be a black yeah, a you single can pixel board. statement for all of those little attributes. Well, but all that can be done with CSS yeah. really easy, and I just right now I just t say what theme it is to use to generate the book. And so that that's a fairly straightforward thing. You talked about going with the publisher, so you're looking to just let somebody take okay. that and run with it, so you get the price yeah, difference so, in so there. Yeah. So what, so what's the main goal? So here's the way you do book publishing these days, and this will work for right now. Now physical. when the what physical books. Now when the publishers figure out that they're going broke and there's no way back, they're going to go bankrupt, and you won't be able to suck any money out. Of them. But you can right now, and here's the way you do it. Once you have your book to a point where it sells at least a thousand copies for six months straight, so six thousand copies, one thousand, one thousand, one thousand, oh, thousand per month, per sometimes. month, solid straight for six months, then you can. It's like a TV show. Flip yeah. that book. Get in advance. I'm sorry. Gotcha. Do you see the flip that house? It's yeah. Flip, flip that book. So you can f do what's called flipping the book, and the way you flip a book is once you have proved based on Amazon data, you can't lie to them and say, well, you know, it's that's just the way it is. No, they'll go check the data. Right. Although, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, how would they check that? Well, they don't know how much you charged either. You could jack up your sales at the yeah, night. Yeah, there's all sorts of games you could play. So the, the rule of the game, it's like venture capital. The rule of the game is that you're going to make them a pitch to try to get the biggest advance. So um, uh, the book agent, there's only one book agent I'm willing to use. She's the book agent that Mark Victor Hansen and Robert Allen use. And I think she's up to eight first-time authors now in their first book. She's gotten them seven-figure advances. Nice. Wow. Um, and well, the way that works is that advance is against sales. So if you don't make the sales, you owe that money back. Mm -hmm. But if they go bankrupt, which they probably will before long, then, they, then nobody's going to be coming back asking for your money back. So um, I apologize too much. Um, so the way it works is you uh, you do a thousand sales for six months, and I'm going to have to figure out how to track that because I've got to make sure. I'm, I'll just call her and ask her. How, you know, how do you track it? But then what they'll do is they'll take you on as a client of theirs because you 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 basically proved you've got a platform that you're able to sell your book because all books right now sell on business plans. The primary part of your pitch, if you go to a book agent now, the first thing they look, they look through, they read your cover letter to see what it's about. Then they start flipping through your book proposal looking for the marketing plan. How are you going to sell these books? Because publishers are printers. They don't sell books, right? Yeah. So the first thing Jillian said, you know, I, the, you know, the first thing I'm looking at in your book is, is your marketing plan. And she said, the reason I got Mark and Robert... Um, I think she got him $1.2 million for that one, point, what, that one minute millionaire book. She said the reason was they had a 23 point marketing plan that was real. You read through those 23 points and you know, yep, they can do that and they can do that. They, I know they can do that. I know they can do that. And she said at the end of those 23 points, the publisher got out his checkbook and said, how much? Hmm. And she gave him a number and they said, and she said they wrote it out. She said, I should have asked for more. Right. Right? It's always a bad sign when they start yeah. writing. They think, oh, i got a deal this day. Yeah, so you're looking, that's the end outcome more so than just getting that price difference to sell more of your Kindle books. 
Uh, that's part of it too, but if I can get a seven-figure advance before all the big publishing houses go bust, then I'll take it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Why yeah, not? All the good is good, exactly. Right, and so especially Anne's book, I think, would lend itself well to that since you've written that's most the reason, of it. That's the reason why I'm building a community, because it's going to have a, a YouTube platform. Yeah. It's going to have cool. a multi-level platform. Awesome. What yeah. about the, the other question I had? Have you looked into ACX much or... ACX like is the program. that's the the publishing um, uh, the publishing funnel that runs audio content into Audible now. So ACX is the Create Space of audio audio uh, books. But yeah, it's weird because Create Space you can do MP3. So I'm thinking it's, it's like a really, standalone a audio odd. program. I, yeah, I'm not unsure. But anyway, uh, ACX. yeah, ACX. So the, the another way that you can repurpose your book, which I I may do, um, is to have somebody read my book. Uh, and who was it that, that Johnny said we could get for ten grand to read the book? Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson, yes. And I was thinking, for ten grand, I can have Samuel Jackson read my book. Dude, I'm like, get from Morgan Freeman. I don't know. But, oh, Morgan, yeah, or, or Peter Coyote. Is James Earl still around? James, James Earl I think Jones. he's passed. James Earl Jones. I think he's still around. Is he still around? So. Anyway, so the 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 See, point is that that's another way that you can repurpose your content is as audio. So, so anyway, ACX is the audiobook publisher you said? Yeah, if you go into Amazon, ACX, exactly. uh, in the KDP select back end, you'll see two big blocks, Create Space, ACX. So they they're, um, they talk about it. But yeah, there are a lot of people that buy audiobooks that mm -hmm. wouldn't take the time to read it because they're listening on their smartphone they're, on the yeah, commute to work or whatever. Or yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, traveling, whatever. That's the big, that's, that's the really good And the other trick, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, because I've yet to do any audio publishing, probably what I would do is an audio book, and I might just read it myself for this, is to do a um, condensed version. Okay, and continually refer. Well, if you'd like to, do I mean, a this, summary of this is book. really complicated. Yeah, but that. you know, just go buy the book for the totally details. But but the the, <laughs> the summary of it is here's the here's why you got to do it. And if the if you say, well, yeah, I should do that, then you know, I don't want to waste your time here. Yeah, it's like when you had a when you had a profitable ad campaign, you knock it off yourself before your competitors. So oh yeah, absolutely. you're doing a summary before your competitors. You That's could nice. have the the car ready version and the home ready version there you because go. if you were doing something that was like going to change you vibrationally you don't want to be reading it and hearing about it in the car oh, oh that's another trick you can use in an audiobook is <laughs> that um so the i'm going to give you a little overview of this i'm going to give you a little overview of this topic here yeah and what what you're really going to have to do though is go to my website for the whole content i'm going to give it to you free because you bought the book but yeah. you'll have to go register and get the whole audio because i don't want you driving in the car doing this because you're going to hurt yourself Mm -hmm. Now that's some an intrigue there. Whoa. I don't want you to get pulled over by a car. Yeah, pulled over. So right. Turned on that. Yeah, I don't want you to get you pulled jump over. over jumper. I don't want you to get pulled over by a cop or have an accident or have your wife wonder what in the world you're doing. Anyway, so I mean, there's all sorts yeah, of ways you could spend. Right. You don't have to wait five minutes in the car before you can get out. Exactly. So anyway, and and um, I think starting the next time we do these, I think I'll run them at 10:30 because some people from San Antonio said they'd like to come. And traffic is Beat just tra trying to get here through 8.30 traffic get from that. San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, do you, anything else? You want to announce once? he's on the meetup? Two. Yes. Once, twice, thrice. Woo! So Happy Friday. Friday.